Every team, every topic, everywhere. This is Believe. Welcome to Sugar Coated Murder Podcast, a brilliant true crime podcast hosted by two zany sisters, all while baking up delicious treats in their kitchen. Here are your podcast hosts, Karen Devaney and Ann Varner. G, we're back. Indeed we are. See, here's the thing. Last week we were back, but this time we're really back because we showed up again. Yes, we're back. <laughs> now we're back back. Now we're really back because it wasn't a fluke. Right. Like we actually were like, oh, let's do this yeah. again. We said, okay, we're really, we're in it. We're in it to win it. We are. I feel like we've really got some momentum now. Yeah. <laughs> and please let me apologize to all of our fans Uh-oh. about my duplicated recipe from last week. You know what? It's a, I feel I'm like, just sorry. I feel we like that that we're going to have to get a pass if it's, I mean, we bake a lot of crap. We do. So I'm just and saying we can't always tired. remember. And there you go. Don't do it again. <laughs> I will hit you. I will hit you back. I know. That's the fun part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, nobody cared. And it was good the second time. Like, it's good every time you make it, so I don't care. Exactly. Yeah. I, I am making something that I know for sure has not been made before. What are you making? It's, I am. It's looking good in my kitchen. Yep. So, I decided to opt for a no-bake recipe because... Yeah, like the oven's not on. No. Nope. Mm-hmm. It's not even going to go some, in the microwave. We were running some beaters, but... Yeah, that was it. That was it. Um, I, what I have made, or I'm in the process of making because it's chilling, but I will tell you what I did. It is, um, chocolate chip cookie dough dip. I thought my refrigerator smelled like chocolate chip cookies. Yeah. There's a bowl in there that looks like cookie dough. I wonder. But I shan't be putting them on a baking sheet. (laughs) (laughs) And it's a really easy recipe and it's a pretty fun recipe. I got to tell you, it was, I mean, it's easy if you... I mean, Super Bowl's coming up. Oh, yeah. If you get assigned to bring a dish, mm-hmm. this would be something that's like out of the wings and nachos family. It's a dessert. Yes. And it's it's a fun one. It's fun. And you don't have to bake it. I love a no-bake. Yeah. But first, this is what I want to say. You had a birthday this week. I did. Yeah. I made it around the sun again. Yeah. So, um, happy birthday Thank to you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, so that is something. That is something. We haven't had the celebration yet. We're having no. that over the weekend. So you haven't had the opportunity to make me my birthday dessert. I know. And unfortunately, I won't be making it for the show because it's a dessert we've made before. Exactly. I specifically have made this before, but it's okay. But that's okay. It's Because we know one, it tastes good. <laughs> do you remember that one she made that one time that's like the cake and it's got the bananas fosters, but the best part of it is it's got bourbon, <laughs> green cheese, frosting. Yeah, it's really Hummer. good. Yeah, and there's so, bourbon, of course, in the bananas foster yes, as well. And in the in the cream cheese frosting, so it doesn't bake out. So yeah. it's like... You get a good bite. Yes. Get a good little good bite. Punch. It's nice. I'm so excited about it. So I I'm going to tell you. Taste it. Like I can smell it. Yeah, I'm excited I'm too. I'm ready. excited. It's going to make my whole kitchen smell good. So I'm just going to tell you about this dip really quick. Oh, yeah. Please it's in, do. like I said, it's chilling. It's chilling like a villain chilling up in your like fridge. Chilling like Dylan. Yeah. So it is a stick of butter, unsalted, softened, eight ounces of cream cheese, softened. A third of a cup of sugar, a quarter of a cup of light brown sugar, two and a half teaspoons of Killa Vanilla. Mm-hmm. So if you don't make it with Killa Vanilla, it will it not be right. successful. No, it's not going to taste as good. A half a teaspoon of salt and one and a half cups of chocolate chips. I use the mini chocolate chips. I love a mini chip. Yes. I think in I think for ratio's sake in this situation, it just really called for a mini chip. I personally wish that they would make a mini chip and more variety. More like flavors. I would like a dark chocolate mini chip. Me too. I wouldn't even mind like a mini chip in the butterscotch. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. All of them. All there's of all them. flavors in mini. Yeah. Why, why can't they do that? I don't know. I don't either. It's on my nerves. Yeah. 
I my like too. a mini chip in my chocolate chip cookies, but I also really like the dark chocolate because I put yeah. the Heath bar pieces in it. Yes. So you want to have that rich dark chocolate up against the toffee flavor and yeah. then the brown butter. And it's not course. like overly sweet. Right. But I, there is not a mini dark chocolate chip that I've come across. And I'm quite disappointed in that. Me too. All right. So anyway, you put your cream cheese, your butter, and your two sugars in. They're softened. And then you whip them with beaters for two minutes until they're really, really creamy. And then you're going to um, add your vanilla and your salt. And you're going to give it another whip. And then you're going to, you can either fold in or beat in your chocolate chips, whichever mm, you prefer. Whatever, yeah. So easy. You put that all in a bowl and then so you. So I think for recipes like this going forward, mm -hmm. I'll challenge you with, <laughs> instead of using electric beaters or a stand mixer or even a hand whisk to use the crank whisk of yesteryear. Either that you know or you know whisk. what I have is I have the, the old fashioned mashed potato masher. Okay. And I, still I can feel like use that's going to be a little that. easier than cranking, like cranking. I don't know that this crank would things. go through this dough. I'm just going to challenge you. Okay, I will make forward. you a deal. You find me one of those to use, and I'll use it. Girl, on it. <laughs> <laughs> In the meantime, I put this. It should chill for a couple of hours. Um, the recipe doesn't say to chill it, but I'm going to tell you it's better chilled. And then when you bring it out. This recipe said serve it with pretzels or mm. fruit. Mm. Right. I serve it with vanilla wafers. Nice. But it is it, it adds another layer of sweetness. So if yeah, you Yeah, even a you graham know, cracker might a be graham, nice. Yes, there was another recipe that I saw that that said graham crackers yeah. would be good. Or one of those fancy Biscoff cookies, that Let's might see. be good. I don't know. I just think this is because the pretty biscoff sweet. isn't really sweet. That's it's true. More, it's got mm -hmm. more of a bitter taste to it. So it might offset it. <gasps> What about the dang, um, the bitters, the, no, the bitters. The no, bitters. Not the bitters. Oh, what are those cookies called that they eat in England that they love? They're, the digestive? Yes. <laughs> Perhaps on a digestive. I think it would be perfect on a digestive. Yes. I was like, where is she going with this? I had no idea what we were at, what not we were bitters, having. Not the bitters. No, the, don't the bring the bitters into this. The digestives. <laughs> yes, if we could get some good digestives. I'm sorry I don't have any of those tonight, but if we did... You would be having it with that justice. Tally ho. Tally ho, my that's friend. exciting. Yep. Yeah, so. Well, well, that's chilling. Yeah, but can Let's, we just talk a minute? Oh, God. Yeah, this has been can a crazy just, week, can right? Can we just talk a minute about the Murdoch trial? Oh, I was just going to say before I started, please excuse me if I get a little lost in my story. It's been a couple weeks since I wrote this story, but mm -hmm. I have so much murder on my mind right now. It's going to be hard to keep everything straight. It is. It is. We this have here trial. in South Carolina this Alex a Alex Murdoch M U R D A U G H. No matter how they want to pronounce it, it's he's been accused of murdering his wife and son, and he's a prominent, used to be a prominent attorney in one of the count surrounding counties um, in the Low Country. So he's on trial and they're streaming it. They're not showing it. I'm not picking it up anywhere on TV, but they are streaming it. So I've set up my Surface Pro beside me while mm -hmm. I work, mm -hmm. you know? So I've actually gotten a crick in my back from the way I'm, I'm sure. turning to watch. Yes. Which is, I need to switch. You need to square up. up. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm watching, but when I, at the end of the day, so the trial starts at what, 9.30 yeah. start, and it goes until 5.30. They take an hour and 20 minutes for lunch. They take a couple of 10 minutes, maybe 15 minute recesses. And occasionally the judge will have everybody stand up and stretch. Other than that, it is like, Bang, 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 all the way through. It makes my work day go very fast. I know, but me when too. It's, over, it's like my mind is like, what just happened? <laughs> yeah, it's been crazy. So the first couple of days was a little bit boring, and I was like, where's the where's the dramatic where part? Yeah. But it was really just them entering all of the evidence. There's so much evidence, and just entering all in, into the evidence, the evidence into the trial or whatever. So that was kind of boring. But now today. Actually, starting yesterday when we started talking about the cell phone data, which I find fascinating. Yeah. Um, I just think that 
starting yesterday afternoon, like after lunch, we started, the train finally left the station. Yeah. And so now. there's some things that I'm listening, I'm cringing to some of the text messages, just cringing. Because oh, I know it's yeah. like everyday banter back and forth. You feel comfortable seeing certain things that maybe you wouldn't say in mixed company or in, in a public. room full of people. <laughs> and then I start to think, oh my gosh, is yes. there anything I need to go back and clean up in my text messages? Like, I think I'll be very careful about what I say going forward. Yeah. Not that we typically have any kind of racist, anything back and forth ever, but we do sound kind of dumb sometimes. We sound really <laughs> dumb. I wouldn't be one of yeah. I wouldn't want somebody on the stand to be like, oh my God, you got you. Like, I think the whole courtroom would laugh if they read some oh, of our text please. messages. Oh my God. Before. No. So, no. yeah. We, I agree. English um, grammar. So, going my, my son was over this afternoon and I had the trial playing in the background and we we were talking about some of the text messages. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, my God, how embarrassing to have some of this stuff just read out in court. Right. And he's like, well, first of all, she didn't know when she was texting that it was going to be read in, no. in a public forum. No, and I said, not. absolutely not. No. And I said, but it does make you take pause. And he was like, oh, if I get murdered, they're going to read my text and they're going to say this motherfucker <laughs> deserved to be murdered. <laughs> he deserved it. He, he was time. a really bad guy. It was just a matter of time. <laughs> yeah. So, so he's like, they're going to completely misunderstand <laughs> everything. So I was just like, maybe we need to think about that. And he's like, no, we'll be dead. It won't matter. It won't matter. That's yeah. Right. We won't care. <laughs> so what have been some of the shocking things that you've heard? So like, Things that you didn't, maybe you didn't realize were coming. So, specifically today, I picked up, and I, listen, I am I really am a dumb, ditzy blonde, it, or used to be blonde, or whatever. Anyway, I was not... Wait, I walked away from the microphone. I had uh, to... I object. Oh, she objects. You've never been a ditzy blonde. Okay, just a ditz. <laughs> anyway, um, I today when they were going through and they've been going over these guns and ammunition to the Nats eyelash. I mean, it's yes. just been that's been a little bit boring, guys. Let's pep it up. So, but they did start talking about a missing gun, and I feel like the way they introduced it was brilliant. Right. It wasn't uh everybody knows this is coming. Right. It was, I'm going to prove the point before I have to say the point. Right. And I thought that was really good. Yeah. And with and I didn't know that was coming. I didn't know anything about this gun that really is missing from the home that's unaccounted for. And it's not the one that was stolen by, from Paul right. years ago. Right. And it had been used maybe 30 days before the murder. Right. So it was in the house. Yeah. So that and I was not prepared for. There have been for. a lot of very alarming things to me that have come out that but for me today the biggest like wait a minute because I'm trying to keep an open mind it's very hard I will admit it is very hard to do because there has been so much coverage here between listening to to we only listen to one podcast about it um, which is called the Murdoch Murders it's Mandy Matney and she does a fantastic job she's the only one you should listen to yeah we would never dream of trying to cover this case because she's gonna she gets it all like she gets it she is the she is the reason all of this came to light definitely for sure she's the one that brought it all to light and and I'm I mean she's just the most courageous brave ballsy definitely I mean she but I love it for me it's You know, it's hard to keep an open mind when you read so much and you hear a lot of opinions and all of this other stuff. And he's accused of so many other crimes that the jury may or may not be able to hear about. I know. So we have this whole monster that we know is hanging out here and we know all the financial pressures. But for me, one of the moments that made me be like, oh, wait a minute. Today was when they were talking about him and the video um, they showed a Snapchat video of him driving around the property yes. um, with his son before the murder. And this has been like, oh, they were out looking because some sunflowers got killed and there was a tree that was hanging weird that needed to be replaced and all this other stuff. And then at the end of the day, the last thing we heard at the end of the day was look at what he's wearing, which is nothing Another, like what he was wearing. And so here's the crazy him. thing. 
the prosecution has now made another point right. without having to state the point. Right. It's brilliant. It is very smart. It's so very smart, smart the way they're going about this. Yeah. So I haven't listened to anything. I know Nancy Grace has been, she's actually outside the courtroom. Oh, I'm sure. Day. There's. She's like I in mean, a yeah. parking lot under a tent doing her thing. Yeah, day. they've got press out there galore. Um, I, think they, I know Court TV is out there. Yeah, I think they had an influx of 10,000 people. In oh, that yeah, little they have area, food trucks and everything. Set yeah, they, it's there, like so. a food truck rodeo going on yeah. every day. But I guess that's I mean, the good news is we're getting all the information. We're watching it live, so we can try and yes. you know figure things yeah, out. Yeah, because I we go I want to watch it myself. I don't want somebody to feed me their perspective right. because they may have not picked up on something. So that's the reason I'm not watching Nancy Grace. Yes. but I am very interested. I did yeah. hear that she was concerned about the jury, um, but and I get it. Um, they did say today that the jurors don't have notepads, so they're not taking notes. But the only thing I can figure as a juror, I believe you have access to the court records. And all of the evidence comes to you. Right. So they're going to have the transcripts yes. available to them. They can go back. So I get not making yep. notes. And it may be on their breaks that they go back to the room and, and make, make notes. notes. It, it may be like a protection thing to make sure nothing leaks out. Mm-hmm. So, could. I mean, the jury's not sequestered, so. No, they're not. Um, I don't know. It should be really interesting. We're on day eight. This was day eight. and But I feel like it really far. was just day two and a half I because I feel so like, fast. yeah, I just feel like that um, the and, first four days were just like evidence, evidence, evidence. I just love this judge. Oh, he's got he it is, together. He has it together. He's very professional. He doesn't, he's not going to pull up, put up with any BS, no antics, no theatrics. He, you yeah. Because if you start going down that theatric point, he's going to say, he calls you get on to it. the point. Yeah. You know, like you've said that already. Right. In Stop several different ways. You, we've yeah. heard it enough. Yeah. Do you have another point? So yes. he's really good about keeping things straight in his courtroom. And I like that about him, but he is just freaking adorable. He comes he in is. and he's smiling. He's always cheerful. He just gives off a really positive vibe, this guy. And he's really and he's chill. Listening. And he's listening. And he's not into the court drama. He's not no. into the press being there and him being a star. Like, no. And I just feel like he's such a sound. I think he's the epitome of what a judge is supposed to be. He's what they needed for this trial. Absolutely. Because he's so chill. Yeah. He's so chill. I agree. So, anyway, by the time it's over, I'm, like, revved up. I don't know, I know what to do. And then I get off, and, like, you and I text all through the day. Oh, like, yeah. uh, Did every time that? somebody oh, says, God. can you see that? Do you see that person behind so-and-so? What is she wearing? And how <laughs> frustrating is it when we have a gosh darn meeting, and we have to speak oh, in the gosh. meeting or run the meeting, and I'm yeah, like, oh, or I've take a minutes, <laughs> And I'm like, oh, no, I have a meeting, too. Oh, I'm going to miss it. Mm-hmm. And you can't sound like you can pause the video because it's a live stream. And oh, my God. I know. It's the craziest thing in the world. It truly is. But it's a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. And today ended with what I think was a kaboom. I mean, a lot of fun because we've been waiting for the trial. There's been all the media coverage in the beginning. And this, this man really and truly is a monster based on the financial crimes that they have evidence that we know there's proof of and the things that he's done to his clients and their families along the way, including his housekeeper. And he's been convicted of some of these crimes. So we're not just making shit up here. But at the heart of the matter, these two innocent people lost their lives. Absolutely. It I shattered am, an entire family. But I wish that we didn't have to have a trial. Completely unnerving to watch. What's her happening? family is not in the court. We've not seen no. her family in the court. And I don't I don't know if it's because they're being called as witnesses. I'm not quite I sure. I think that they're all on witness lists, but Buster's there and Buster's on the witness list too. His oh, that's right. brother, his sister in law, they're all there and yeah. they're all on but they're also I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how you it do it. Maybe they too, just don't want to hear it. It may be too difficult for yeah, them. Yeah, it may totally be that they just that. don't want to hear it. So and they're on the defense. Um Witness list. Yeah, I saw that the, defense the defense only. only. That, I thought that was interesting. But a couple of the people that were that we listened to today were on both. They're on they both. They were on both. So because the defense stood up and said, "Well, he's our witness." I know. And I was like, "Well, the prosecution got to win first. <laughs> well, yeah, and the prosecution. So. I mean, it may be your witness, but the prosecution gets the first jab at mm-hmm. him, and they were doing a good job. They and did a that's really good job. kind of what led up to the ending, right? Of 
Um, a real cliffhanger. I know. So the, the judge had said none of the financial crimes. It's like, what did he call it? Series 404 or something. something yeah. So, but his, his. Which basically addresses things that you've been accused of in other cases. Yes. That have not gone to trial. Right. They can't bring into evidence. So they can't bring that into evidence. And that, for that reason, the prosecution has not been allowed to say anything about that. And then. This afternoon, the last witness on the stand, and it had to have been like, I mean, it was late when they got off. It was after 530. So I think it was, I mean, I, I honestly, I think it was like 10 of 6. I don't remember the exact time. It was time. pretty close because I remember thinking, my God, they when I when we were done, I said to my husband. Well, who I, can, had, I can pull out my text message. Yeah, because we texted, oh, yeah, we texted like, right then. Happened? So anyway, so the there was a witness on the stand and the prosecution asked a witness, um, how well did you know Alan right. Murdoch? Right. Uh-oh. And then the, um, when the defense went, uh, had their cross examination, he went in and said, you know, you've spent all this time with them. You've been at all their houses. I mean, he, you know, talked to, they had talked at length about his relationship and he said, how well do you know Alec right. Murdoch? Right. And the witness said, I know him very well. Right. And he said, could you ever imagine anything that would cause Alec Murdoch, the man that you know well, to murder his wife and son. Right. And the kid said, or the the kid, he's not a kid. He's a, he's a grown man. He's a grown man. He's but, a kid to us because he's yeah. 30 years younger. And the witness <laughs> said, no. Yeah. Yeah. So you would think that's the big kaboom, and it's not. It's not. Because then you get a redirect by the prosecution. Listen to me in these words. By the prosecution. And so... The prosecution then asked the guy, did you know about... This was a different guy. This is a different... This is a different witness. A yes. different witness. The first guy That's they true. left it at, but the way he said, I know him. Like, how well do you know him? And the guy said a couple of times, I know him. Right. And you could take that as, I know him well enough to know that he's going to kill his wife and kid. Or yeah. you could take it as, I know him well enough to know he wouldn't do this. It, it was hard to say. And I think what they were doing was they were driving home. I know him. I know his voice. Like, I know, I know this man. Him. Yeah, well, two witnesses 100% yes. said that they heard him. Yes. And Even one didn't want to admit it was 100% by, by the end of it when he, he didn't have a choice. hurt when they played the video. He didn't have a choice. He didn't have a choice he but to say that's him. Police officer. That so this, the last witness, I just talked about the second to last witness. The last witness came on. And again, they were talking about ammunition and time he spent with one of the victims and blah, 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 and yada, yada, yada. And the prosecution said, now there was a, some sidebar before the jury was in. When, yeah. The before, sidebar, yeah. yeah, the jury had gone out and they did a sidebar and the prosecution brought up the fact that since the defense had asked a question about, you know, could you imagine, if you know this man really well, could you imagine him killing his wife and kid? Right. They said, because, because based on the knowledge that they're talking about, he said, but it's not fair that the jury isn't hearing that there are financial, that financial crimes. And if you knew him so well, did you know about any of these crimes right. that he was committing or the financial um pothole he was in like he was really in it deep and you know what had been announced that day with his law firm and everything so um so he so what he pretty he pretty much did that so the prosecution is saying the prosecution Prosecution. so the prosecution is saying well um if he if he asked that question right then it's only fair that we ask the the witness right if you knew him, did you know all about these crimes? Right. So the judge wouldn't rule on it. He wouldn't rule. He would just said, I'm going to rule as objections are. Yeah. Yeah. As we get an objection, I'll rule on it right then in the, in that time. Yeah. So, so then the last witness is on the stand. It's like 
five minutes. We just heard about the the different clothing and the, the different next clothing, thing and is, we had heard from the, this witness about the gun that was missing that yes. they didn't say was missing, but they said it was missing. Right. And then then we got to see the video right. of him not wearing pants, which I don't think we were even supposed to see the video. That's the first time they've really let us watch. We didn't see the video. I didn't see the video. I could only see it barely on a monitor. But on the, a monitor. But the prosecutor says, what is he wearing? I know. I know. So, so you're getting me all, I'm like all tangled up now. So anyway, this last one, this last witness, he, the prosecution actually said, did you, how well did you, do you know Alec Murdoch? And the guy was like, I know him very well. And he was like, did, what did you think of him? Did you think he was a good guy or whatever? This is in the redirect. And he was like, yeah, he said, did you, did you know the man that has been indicted on blah, 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 financial crimes? Did you know this man that was being sued because of a a fatal boating accident? Did you know this man? Like he just went through some of the grievances against Alec right now. And the guy said, I didn't know any of that, but what I wanted was a, I wanted a follow-up punch that said, if you if you didn't know him that well, how can you say he wouldn't have murdered right. his wife right. and his son? You didn't know any of that stuff was going on. Right. So, but we didn't get we that. We were holding our breath. We were holding our breath yes. because I just wanted it to be one of those objection. Perry Mason moments. Yes, because that objection, and I was like, "Oh my god, yeah, please." Yeah, and so we're all like leaning forward into the computer monitor, trying to wait on this judge because there was this objection by the defense and the judge goes overruled and that's it for court today guys and he ended and court he ended court oh he did wait he no. after the jury was gone to no 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 so he said overruled and then the prosecutor said i have no further questions right and the judge said well that's it for court the jury can be excused don't talk about the case yes so the jury left but then the judge usually after the jury goes he does any housekeeping he has at the end Mm -hmm. and he had some things to say yes he did and um he's i don't i can you say what he said because (laughs) i was so excited i don't know that i heard all the words Oh, so he said that he would take a look at this. I don't know, it's like a 404 or something. It's a for, ruling 404. Some kind of a, a legal, which, so what the, what the judge is basically doing is he wants to make sure that nothing can be brought back in an appeal or to overturn a verdict to say the judge didn't do his due diligence. So he's going to go back. I'm sure he'll be reading up on the statute to make sure that he, that he can overrule that objection and that it doesn't have to be stricken from the yeah. record. And if that's the case, then the jury has to disregard it. They can't factor any of that into I know. what we're hoping is the jury needs to know. They need I to know. I think that it needs to. I think the judge, what he did today was the way to go. I'll rule on it as, yeah. oh, I totally you know, agree. as I see how it's being used and where we're going with it. Yeah. I think it was really a really smart thing. And then, and then that was it. It was over. Yeah, we have to wait till tomorrow at nine thirty, and I can't I'm wait. Make it. I'm telling you, <laughs> I'm just have like, a podcast to record. Yeah, well, that's at least we had this to do. I mean, if, if not, I'd be. I don't know. I'm I'm trying to stay off the media. I know with it, hard. but it's hard not to. Well, and we just have been. The only thing that we, I do read is as anything that Mandy Matney tweets. I, I read it, I, and I she's watch, she usually does an end of the day recap in a morning hello. Yeah. And that's what I've been reading. I try not okay. to read anything else. I did post one thing on social media today that I thought it was telling that one of the witnesses, there was a, a piece of an audio tape that was played when um, Alex was talking the night of the murder. He was talking to investigators and he was sobbing, crying, and it's very difficult to understand what he was saying. And there's this debate. Did he say I did him wrong or did him so bad or did, did he say they did him so bad? And it is very difficult to understand. I think it's telling that the man testified who was, he was in the car. See, he heard it. He he yes. has the luxury of hearing it firsthand. Yeah. You're hearing it over yeah. a cell phone recording through a system in a courtroom that's yeah. echoey and 
everything else. So I just felt like it was very telling that that man said, he said, I did him so bad. Meaning that, I mean, if, if, if you have any interest, you should go and look at it. The, the details of the condition of the bodies. Oh, that very, was very, very graphic and gory. And, and it was, I knew it was gory going into this, but I didn't know it was as gory as it no was. Idea. It's pretty bad. No idea. So anyway, I just thought that was really interesting. The man that was sitting in the vehicle with him when it happened said, he said, I, there was no doubt in his mind. So there's a big debate about, did he say I, did he say they, blah, blah, blah. But yeah. then again, after today, I feel like everybody was like, oof. I know. Yeah. <laughs> kind of like, oof. Yeah. That was a tough one. So that we'll was see. a tough we'll one. We'll see what happens. Yeah. It's we'll been fun. Happens. I will tell you that, um, you know, normally during the day I'm by myself anyway, right? Yeah. So I'm just going to do my thing Me too. while I'm working. Well, I told you my son was over today for a little bit and I had a trial going and he, he would like to come tomorrow. He would. No, no, <laughs> no, he does not because I have full on conversations with these people out loud. Oh yeah. No, I don't do that. <laughs> no, no. Uh-uh. And I, and so he's like, mom, Oh yeah. you're, you you're or a little enjoy like this is difficult. I don't even and and then he said, "I just it. I feel like you're watching a football game, but that's not what's happening." I was like, "That this is my football. This courtroom stuff is right. my football." And you know, this is not normally what we would do. We don't normally get so invested in and um, maybe occasionally something really high profile, something on well, court TV used to come on the TV. That would be so convenient if they could do that again. I know. So we that's where it all to, started. We used to watch some high profile yeah. cases there, but not. I mean, that's it's really not my thing to to even do during the day. So it's out of the norm for us to do that, and then to even be talking about it because we've said so I know. much. We like to leave it to the professionals. We don't do our research, but we're watching it. We're in it to we're win. We're in it, it to win it, and we're given such an uneducated perspective, which I think oh, is yeah. needed. That totally is so needed. We needed. No like idea. they're yeah. hearing all the professionals and their education yes. and their research. They're you don't have you can don't get that here. No, it you get honest to goodness, uneducated these, conversations. We, these, well, we can understand the point oh, because if yes. this had happened in Franklin, Virginia, oh, it would be much the same. Yeah, people are treated different when they are affluent. Yes, it just. Happens. It just is what it is. It I guess is it comes. It I think it, we bring that over in our DNA. If you came from like Europe, Maybe. where there's a queen. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps. I think, I think Perhaps. maybe you'll get it then. So. Perhaps. All right. Well, we need to get on and let me tell my story. Please. If I can get my dog to calm down. I don't think he's going to calm we'll see down. What happens. We'll see what happens. He's, he's, he's had medicine. It, it should have kicked in by now. Oh. But. He's been a little clingy today, so we'll just see what happens. Okay, well, we'll I'm not going to make eye contact with him. Do not do that. Hey, you want to get doomed? I'm Tessa. And I'm Nicole. And we have a spanking new podcast for your ear holes called Doom Generation. Listen in as two foul mouth biddies have an always casual, often comedic. What? I think we're funny. And sometimes chaotic conversation about the things that doomed us to be who we are today. Take a trip with us down nostalgia lane and we'll try not to veer off the road. Available on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Doom Generation Pod and on Twitter at Doom Gen Pod. Later, Later Doomers. Doomers. All right, so this story we got from a fellow months ago. A feller? Whilst waiting in line at our favorite coffee shop, Evo. Yes. I love this. is a little um, bakery coffee shop in Park Circle in North Charleston. It's called Evo Bakery. E-V-O, like extra version. And we love the people, the baristas in there. They're so sweet and yes. cute and fun. Yes, and, and you go in in the mornings to get coffee and the bakers are in and they're baking. Like there's a this whole open space where they've just got ovens and they're making and baking homemade things. Things, yeah. And it they're always smells good. They're next door to their Evo pizza. Yes, where they, they do. pizzeria. Yeah, so they do like wood-fired pizza. It's um, delicious. It's very, very good. A little bit high-end pizza for you. High-end pizza. They got high-end pizza right here. That's the area. That's what you come here for. I know. So it's, but. So we were in line talking to the barista about our podcast one day and the guy standing behind us said, oh my gosh, my fiance. My fiance. He could be, she could be the wife now. I don't know. It's been so long. 
She said that she loves podcasts. You got all of our information. Well, by golly, by the time we got home, we had an email from this yes. fellow. His I mean, fellow. he was Johnny on the spot. His name was Ridge. He's Ridge on the spot. Ridge on the spot. Mm-hmm. Ridge had sent us an email about a murder case. And God I love believe him. this woman who committed the murders is maybe a distant aunt or cousin or, uh, of some sort of relation. So I feel like there was that, that they, there was a they relation there. shared, like their leaves were in the same family forest. Correct. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yes, yes. So here we go. Thank you, Ridge. And thank you, people at Evo, for always being. Oh, I think we should go there Friday. Yeah, you love a Friday morning out. Somewhere. I just like I feel like by Friday I'm hanging on by a thread and I just need to I had need to start with a win. Yeah, I hear you. Mm-hmm. Start the weekend with a win. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I get it. Mm-hmm. All right, Evo Bakery. We'll mm-hmm. see you on Friday. Yes. All right, here we go. Four year old Billy White the second. Right? I mean we could call him junior, but I don't know. They said Billy White the second was rushed to the emergency room at around 3 o'clock in the afternoon on June 21st, 1973. Oh, 73. His skin was that extremely... was before the bicentennial. Wet. It was before the bicentennial, <laughs> but... I'm telling you, it's a long time ago. You don't say that because we've both been born by then. I know. <laughs> His skin was extremely white and he wasn't breathing. His stepmother, who brought Billy to the hospital, said that she thought he'd been choking on a piece of plastic. By the time doctors and nurses got, got Billy, he was dead. Oh. One of the doctors pulled a ball of plastic from Billy's throat. It was described as something like a bag that comes in, like your dry cleaning would come in. And Billy's stepmother, her name is Sylvia White, said it was plastic that Billy had pulled from a laundry basket that she had been doing some laundry in. But the description the doctors and the nurses gave was like a big ball of plastic that unfolded like a flower. So, you know, are what you I'm telling me that you were talking about a, the murder of a child? That's really rough, sugar. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying that's rough. Well, do you want me to stop? <laughs> no, no, I want you to keep on going, but I'm just saying. Gosh, that's heavy. Okay. Yeah. It's a murder podcast. I feel like we've had this conversation before, but the roles were reversed. All right. Well, let me just keep going. Just hold your freaking horses, all right? They're holding. Okay. The nurses thought that the whole situation was a little suspicious, but they didn't see anything because the the medical examiner wrote that it was an accidental death. Mm. And once the medical examiner comes in and says this is what it is, then that's what it is. So Sylvia White was married to Billy's dad, Billy White Sr. Together they had seven children. They were like the mighty freaking bunch. Seven. That's a lot of children. children. Sylvia had three from a previous marriage and Billy Sr. had four from a previous marriage. Six of the kids were in school on the day that Billy died. So it was just Sylvia and Billy at home that day. Because Billy was four. He wasn't in school yet. The rest of the kids were at school. Mm -hmm. Needless to say, Billy Sr. was devastated by little Billy's death. Little Billy. Oh, little Billy. Oh, I can't call him that. Billy Jr.'s death. Little Billy too. Billy too. Billy uh -uh. ah-ah. As a way way of coping. (laughs) Billy uh -uh. (laughs) ah-ah. No, No, this is the murder of a child. Mm Mm-mm. So, as a coping mechanism, he threw himself into work. He was an insurance salesman, and he did very well for himself. He made really good money. And over the next 20 years, Billy and Sylvia became part of the elite socialites in Kinston, North Carolina. Shut your front door. Kinston, North Carolina, girl. Kinston. They went to a lot to a lot of charity events and hobnobbed with the wealthy folks. Kinston is a very small southern town in North Carolina where the people look out for each other. Yeah, they do. Billy was very outgoing, and he was just an all-around good guy. He sold insurance door to door. Now, come oh on. Oh, my gosh. Door to door. Come on. Well, back then, I, I don't like I to imagine talk to you that's about now. And that's, I think that's the only way it got sold back yeah. then. I'd like to talk to you about your insurance needs. And they were like, yeah, come on come, in. Come in, Belly. 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 I don't know why. How about Billy? Billy. I'm calling Belly if I want to. It's my story. 
<laughs> well, I just never heard of anybody called Belly. Well, on meet purpose. Belly. <laughs> meet Belly Senior. <laughs> Billy, oh. Billy, I, I, Daddy. <laughs> Anyway, really? Billy was so white that he managed to sell insurance to almost all of the police force. Like oh my God. I thought you were going to say the whole, all the town the or the whole, whole bridge club. The but whole it's police force. Like, come on. <laughs> He's a good guy. I'm just saying they don't all live in the same neighborhood. So how did he get to all of them? He's a he door to door. He just walked into the police station. Oh, and yeah. <laughs> I forgot they can all get together there. <laughs> you have no choice. <laughs> if you're going to sell to a group of people that work together, you must go door to door to their homes. <laughs> Dang. Oh, my goodness. Oh, so anyway, Billy, Billy was a very big deal. Mm-hmm. That's why on January 21st, 1992, the town was shook when Sylvia reported Billy missing. Sylvia told the what? boys, he's missing. Girl, he is missing. And this is post losing his son. This is in 92. That happened back in 73. Oh, my God. This is 92. 73. That's before the bicentennial. <laughs> really? <laughs> wow, you're so good. You're so Sorry. good. I know. So, Sylvia calls and said, y'all, Billy's missing. And they said, what? <laughs> They did. Oh my God. Is that quoted in the court documents? <laughs> no. And they said, what? No, no, they, they didn't do that. Oh my God, let's talk real quick. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm sorry, I put my finger exactly where I left off so I won't lose my place. But can we talk about the court report? I don't understand what's happening. There, they, there's a machine. Well, I don't like that. It looks like a no, nebulizer. I love it. And they just talk they in talk it? They talk into it, and it records It records everything. But there is and another court reporter it. there. You can do it either way. You can do it shorthand typing. Okay. Or you can do it so into I the think thing. It's I funny that the, the older lady does the thing on your mouth, and the younger guy does the typing. I saw him, though. Oh, did he the, have the it? Mouthpiece. Oh, I missed yeah. it. Could have been like when I was in one of my dang meetings. I know, but anyway, yes. sorry. But the I, first day, I was like, "What's wrong with that lady up there? <laughs> She's is she on a breathing machine? I knew what she that? was doing. I love it. That's cool. That's but, something I'd like to do. I know. Can you imagine that? But the first time I called a guy Billy, <laughs> his real name was Billy. They'd be like, yeah. "You're fired." But you and I would call it like a. We would be like <laughs> commentating. A, yes, they're prosecutors, and we'd be adding our own little tidbits. Ooh, <laughs> yeah. Lord, oh my God, we'll be like. Okay, here comes Belly's uncle's cousin to the stand. <laughs> She's dressed in polyester head to toe. Oh my gosh, did you see the color pink on those shoes? <laughs> yeah, Somebody I mean, was they, having a sale of keto. They were not going, they're never going to let us be court no, reporters. We're fired, we're fired, we're fired before we started, fired. before we even applied. <laughs> So, because Billy was so well oh, yeah. loved in the community, Sorry. the police said, "Listen, we're going at this full force." They launched a boots on the ground search, and they decided, "Let's get the planes going too. No. Let's go aerial. We're going aerial, y'all. Be, 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 Up be, in the be careful with that word, aerial. <laughs> it's not, not no. Shh. All right. <laughs> Almost immediately, they found Billy's car. Oh, it's cool. And even from the aerial view, they could see there was a large blood stain on his white shirt. Billy was laying next to the car. I was like, where was his shirt? In the car. No, but Billy, it Billy was in. He was laying face up beside his car, white shirt covered in blood. And they could see that from up in the from air. The air. An aerial view. Careful. Billy was dead. He died. He had two gunshot wounds, one to his chest, the other to his side. His side? Yes, when they found him. That's rude. His wedding ring was missing, oh. and the pockets of his pants were turned inside out. You know, they probably took his chiclets. They probably took his chiclets, <laughs> yes. Because you Damn. know he had those, the mint Of course, ones. yes. To have fresh breath up your door to door. Yes. Police found no shell casings at the scene, and they said it appeared Billy had been robbed. But they also said something about the scene made them think maybe it wasn't just a grab and go. The Kinston police started their investigation into Billy's murder. 
Sylvia told them that Billy was supposed to meet with a man named Timmy Connors. Timmy Connors. Not Timmy not Connors. Timmy Connors. Not no. Not tennis no. player. But, no, please but do Timmy, not get that Timmy wrong. Timmy Connors to sell him a $500,000 life insurance policy. He said he'd been at a seminar about cosmetics when Billy was... No, Sylvia, not Billy. No, not the. Co- oh my Lanta. Is Sylvia Billy a, had been a, a at a cosmetics stressor? conference oh, Billy while was Billy not, oh, God, was doing his thing. So okay. She, so he was not buying the cosmetics. Exactly. Sylvia was at a at, at a seminar about cosmetics when Billy was meeting with this person. Okay. Like Merkay. Whatever is Merkay. It's probably uh, Merkay. It probably was, but didn't it wasn't specific about it. Could have been Merle Norman. It could have been back in 1992. Absolutely. Merle was making a big, a big old comeback. It was like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Just saying it could have been either of them. Yeah. I think Mary Kay, though, she was mm, really strong because that's more I didn't know a, what that sign was you were giving me. Oh. It's solitude. <laughs> <laughs> Mary Kay Cosmetic Sales People Unite. Are that's you what I was saying. <laughs> Did you take up a new, a new job without me knowing <laughs> You're like really gung ho for this workforce that we don't know. <laughs> Maybe Billy had sold all those people insurance too. We don't know. Only don't if he know. went to their houses. The police were able to confirm that Sylvia was in fact out of town and that she had dinner with a friend that night. Mm. They searched high and low for this Timmy Connors, but they came up empty. Frustrated with their lack of details on what happened to Billy, they decided to set up a tip line. In hopes that somebody God, will call in such and help a great them idea. figure out who killed their friend. Listen, that's a great idea because those tip lines, they really do work out sometimes. They really do. They really do. On February the 6th, a tip came in. The caller said, uh, I wish I could read, someone <laughs> had approached him at a party and asked if he knew anyone that would kill someone for him. <gasps> What an unusual question. I don't think I've ever been to a party where somebody came up to me and said, do you know anybody that can kill somebody from I am waiting for the day it happens to me. Because what are you going to do after the party? I would be like, how group text. (laughs) Oh, I'm sorry. No. (laughs) I'd be like, do you know what Betty Lou asked me at her party? Let me take a picture of you, Betty Lou. Let's get a selfie. And then I'd be pointing to her like, she's the one. This is Betty Lou. She's the one. She did it. (laughs) <laughs> the tipster also said he thought two months after the party that he ran into the same guy again. Mm. And that man, he believes is the same man, said that he had, in fact, killed Billy. The tipster didn't have a name, but he said he knew the man was a construction worker. And he said the man had long hair. Bam! <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Long hair. Are you saying long-haired people are dangerous? No, just saying. Or they're guilty. Long hair. Okay. <laughs> the the <flip> big <laughs> Okay. The big long hair to you too. With a few more details, the investigators were able to track down the man with long hair. How? 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 They didn't have the internet. They just they did it. They didn't have cellular devices. In the 90s, they just freaking did it. They really did. And they got it done. This man's name was Taylor. James Linwood Taylor. Wait, James Taylor? His name is James <laughs> Taylor. Oh, my God. And Linwood is a family name of ours. Yes. Oh, my word. I know. I'm going to call him Taylor going forward as opposed yeah. to James. Let's don't call him James Taylor. No. no. Taylor was actually an informant. That's how they figured out who he was. He was oh. an informant who regularly gave the police information about drug deals. Oh, there you go. Not so hard to find after all. When he heard that, because they said, oh, construction worker, long hair. Yeah. That's James Taylor. That's James Taylor. Taylor. Not the singer. Not the singer, but the informant. So Taylor comes in. He talks to the police. Um, The investigators uh, talk to... Wait a minute. Investigators? Mm -hmm. I wrote that they talked to Billy, but they did not. How would they have talked to Billy? They talked to to Taylor. Okay. This Taylor, James Taylor man, who claimed that he had nothing to do with Billy's murder. After eight hours of investigation, uh, not investigation, (laughs) but. um, What is in your cup? (laughs) Nothing. That's a problem. I'm not drinking. Oh, my God. Interrogation. Come on. 
I said to the people at the very beginning, it had been a while since I'd written it, and I found a lot of murder on the brain. Plus, yes. I've got this little tiny uh, twenty-two pound beast that is driving he just me insane. Is, he, he put on weight, and then he acts like he's the big boss. He's carrying a little winter <laughs> weight. Leave him alone. Trout, go lay down. Go, go lay, lay down your down chubby down. butt down. Go lay down. Go night nights. Listen, pork chop. Oh, lay down. No. Oh no. <laughs> After eight hours of interrogation. He finally did confess that he had been hired to kill Billy White. He said that Sylvia White had paid him $20,000 and had given him a van. So here, I've got a van for you and $20,000. Man, she's got it all. That's what I'm giving you as payment for the killing. Now, according to Taylor, Sylvia said that she had been having an affair and wanted Billy gone. Now, mm-hmm. hang on, because I got a side note. <laughs> She'd been trying the be- for the better part of a year to poison Billy, but had been unsuccessful. What? She couldn't pull off the poisoning. That's what she told Taylor. What the heck? I've been trying to poison him, but he won't die. <laughs> that man is Teflon. So now, you're going to have to kill him. Now you've gone kill him. I got a van. You can have the van. And I got 20000 She must be selling a lot of Mary Kay. I mean, she's very successful. <laughs> very. But she's using work, it for bad. Workforce Unite. Oh, no. She knew that, that Billy had a $200,000 life insurance policy, which, like, excuse me very much. You sell insurance, but you only got a $200,000 life insurance policy? I, I think that you probably get more. Maybe... He didn't make a lot of money and could not afford but the $200,000 policy. He was everybody in town's insurance salesman. The reason was because he was only charging a nickel. That's for his barter system. <laughs> Dang it. Yes. So she knew that she was going to get a payout on, upon Billy's death. So Taylor had to source out because he knew he couldn't do it on his own. Yeah. So he paid an uncle of his $300. Uncle Linwood? To help him with the execution. <laughs> No. Uh-oh. So Taylor sets up a meeting with Billy under the pretense of wanting to purchase a life insurance policy. When Billy shows up to the remote spot, he and Taylor start chit-chatting, and Billy's distracted. And then Taylor's uncle comes out of the woods, or the shadows, they say, and he shoots Billy. And then they steal the wedding ring off his finger. They empty his pockets. They pick up the shell casings, and then they head back up. During his confession, though, Taylor gave investigators information they weren't expecting. Uh oh. I know. When that Sylvia, Sylvia was expecting. No. Oh, sorry. When Sylvia was talking to Taylor about how he was going to murder, she said, "Listen," because he was like, "I don't think I can do it." She said, "Listen to me. It's." So when you murder somebody, it is surprisingly easy. Oh, oh no. Mm-hmm. She told him that she had she had given her, she had used a plastic bag to suffocate her four-year-old stepson, who she called it. She referred to the stepson as I her. am going to, I am I'm gonna catapult right through the roof. Are you telling me she just confessed to murdering that boy? I'm telling you she confessed to murdering that four-year-old boy. She shoved plastic down. She suffocated him and then shoved a ball of plastic down his throat. What a diabolical beast. Beast. (laughs) Thank you. Yes. (laughs) Now, when Billy Jr. died, remember, his, his death had been listed as an accident. So investigators go back and they look at all the file from Billy Jr. And they talk to the doctor, the ER nurse, and they're like, what the hell? And they say, these people, like, we were there when she brought that boy in, and we knew something wasn't right, but the medical examiner said it was an accident. We had to go with what he said. So they said, well, you know what? We're going to exhume that body, and we're going to take another look at it. So they had Billy Jr.'s body exhumed, and a new medical examiner reviewed Billy's case and knew immediately that Billy had been murdered. Listen, what year was that? 1973. And what year did Billy get dead? He got, Billy Jr. got dead in 73. And Billy then when Sr. The, got dead in 92. Okay, so in 92, she's finally confessed. I don't know why I was thinking. I don't know. Where are you going? <laughs> okay. I don't know. There's not a lot left of that body, do you think? Uh, it depends on the, the preservation. Okay. Like if he was preserved or. Yeah. 
That's but true. they could still probably see bones if there's a there's like, like a that broken one bone. bone, yeah. Right. Um, they they said that the plastic they found in Billy's mouth didn't have teeth marks in it, and it was too big to even attempt to swallow. Ugh. They also found signs that Billy Jr. had been abused, and then Billy Jr.'s brothers and sisters said that Billy Jr. was very afraid of Sylvia. She was very very bad, and because, because he was she home, was yes. Yes. He took the brunt of everything. On February 13th, 1992, Sylvia White was arrested and charged with first-degree murder in her stepson's death. She was also charged for the murder of her husband, Billy. They tried her for Billy Jr.'s murder first. Let me tell you something. I hope Billy I, I is haunting her. Oh, I hope so, too. Prosecutors knew that if they could get a conviction for Billy I, I then they could try her for capital murder in Billy S.R.'s. Yes. Death. Just, he, he'd just been Billy I. S- uh, sorry, Billy, Billy I. <laughs> Sylvia was found guilty of first degree murder of Billy I. I. <gasps> she agreed to a plea deal and pled guilty to second degree murder of Billy I. So she, she, Avoided the death penalty. They were not going to give her the death penalty. Because she, plead she plead. She plead. She, yeah. She said, okay, I'm guilty. Ugh. Ugh. Uh, she was sentenced to life for Billy I. I's okay. murder. Okay. And was given an additional life sentence for Billy I's murder. murder. Okay. Taylor's uncle, who was the trigger man, uh-huh. was given the death penalty, and he was executed by lethal Whoa. injection in 2002. Listen, North Carolina was not messing around. No. You get, you're get you going down in 92. You're dead in 2002. Zippy zap, man. What? Still 10 years. Taylor took a plea deal, and he pled guilty to first-degree murder and was sentenced to life. He was released on parole in 2020. Where do you think he lives? I don't know. Probably Sylvia- Kingston. Yeah, Sylvia White, now 85 years old, was released on parole December 2nd, 2022. I'm going to tell you right now. Can you believe it? I cannot. How is it that you get two life sentences and you're out on parole? C-O-V-I-D. I don't know. I don't know. But when we're going to work on getting ourselves a... Uh, prosecutor yes or a defense no he's a defense attorney we're getting a real attorney on this show and he's going to help us figure my gosh we have so many questions if y'all have questions let us know yeah we're because you know we'll forget some Corey, we're coming for you we're coming for you curly curly i don't know he doesn't know that he's called curly (laughs) well now he does anyway thank you ridge that was a really ridge that was amazing i'm so glad that they figured out what happened to billy I. i know so he could rest in peace finally. Yeah. Oh, that that Sylvia. She's a rat. Sylvia. She's just Wait, like a. Is that the name? Sylvia. No. Sudo. Sudi. Yeah. Sudi. Is it Sudo? Yeah. Sudo. Yeah. Sudi. People are like getting their guns out and blowing their heads off right now because we can't figure this out. We just need to end it. Oh my god. It's Sylvia. It's definitely not Sylvia. (laughs) Y'all find us on social media. We're done. No, we're gonna eat the dip. Oh, (laughs) shut up! We're gonna eat the dip. dip. Hold on, let me get the dip. Oh my god! (laughs) Give me the dip. You're a dip. (laughs) Oh my god. Oh Lord, have mercy. Listen, we said we're back. We were not just. <laughs> we're working on it. We're working on it. We're back. Oh my gosh. It's a good thing we're only doing one case per episode because oh I think gosh. I just lost everybody at this point. <laughs> at this point, I think it's over. It's just yeah. over. All right, girl. Oh my God. That smells so good. It's almost like icing. Like icing. Oh God. Yeah. Let me give you some nail away from Thank you so much. Oh my god. Oh, I was spreading on it like a knife. <laughs> that is so good. Oh my it's lord. It's very good. I'm I'm glad that I made it because I love the tangy of the cream cheese. Yeah, it's it's just you know, it's it's almost exactly like cookie dough, except you don't bake it and there are no eggs in it. Or flour. 
Yeah, it reminds me more oh, of... Oh, is that gluten-free? Do you think we did a gluten-free thing? I don't know. I, oh, yeah, I guess we did think gluten-free. This is our very special gluten-free chocolate chip cookie dough. Let's don't call it that, because yeah. I don't know if there's gluten in chocolate chips or not. Oh. Might not be gluten-free. Yeah. Don't, I mean, don't it's tell not. us. We don't care. We don't care. <laughs> We're good. It's delicious. Though it doesn't remind me of cookie dough so much as cream cheese icing with chocolate chips in it. It's I agree. So That's. Good. I feel like I'm eating the um, Heinz. Who does the, in the Heinz? The ice? <laughs> like a pill there. Oh, Duncan. <laughs> And we have a website, sugarcoatedpod.com. And we have email, murder.sugarcoated. Murder. <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with us? We didn't drink. We did it. That's the problem. I'm telling you. Every we can't time. keep it together. No. And we <sighs> wrote a book, y'all. Go find it. It's called Click, Click, Click by Ann Varner and Karen Devaney. It is sold on Barnes & Noble online and on Amazon. Please go buy it. And then... Tell your family and friends to buy it. Everybody needs to buy it. I mean, tell the mayor to buy it. Oh, my God, the mayor. Yes. That's a great tell, idea. Everybody go tell your mayor to please, please buy, buy our book. book. Yes. <laughs> it's a new campaign. Yes. Tell your mayor. Please tell your mayor. If you're local to the Charleston area, we're doing a book signing and book club at yes. Village Booksellers on, on February 9th. Yes, we are. So at 630. I know. If y'all are in the area, come. It's a free event. Oh, my God. I just, hope we can keep just, it together for that. I feel like too. we're going to have oh to be God. way more professional. I don't think it's going to work. I don't the think it's going to Because these people are coming because of the book. They probably don't even know oh about no, our podcast. about the podcast. So, I, I almost feel like we should just play a little bit of, like, a clip or two. <laughs> like, our worst moments. Just <laughs> say this is how we expect so this to like go. That would be, like, a whole podcast. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Yeah, moments like tonight when right. we're like probably saying things that we're we're gonna regret uh, saying in the morning. I don't even know if we cussed or not, but if we did, sorry, <laughs> sorry mama. Sorry, mama. Let's just throw that in there mama too. Mama hasn't been feeling well, so oh. get well soon, mama. Yes, mama. We need you well. We need you. We well. want to come see you, and you have to be well for us to well, come. We are coming to see you, but we, but you don't calendar. want us to be sick when we leave. No. All right, that's it. That's all we've got. My dog is finally calm, so we <laughs> just go ahead and <laughs> He's seriously is writing down. I was throwing ice pellets at him before. He doesn't. He doesn't react well to ice. That's well. He thing. sniffed it like it was a treat, and then he walked away. Exactly. Now it's just going to be a wet spot on my floor, but that's fine. I'm going to blame him. Say he piddled. <laughs> All right, guys. We love the hell out of you. Please, for the love of God, and be sweet. All the people in the world, stay sweet and don't murder. Because if you kill people. We, we will, will talk, talk about, about you. you. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. This has been Goodbye. Sugar Coated Murder Podcast, a deliciously entertaining true crime podcast. Like what you heard? You can always explore past episodes by visiting sugarcoatedpod.com. Don't forget to like our Facebook fan page and share with friends. Thanks for listening to Sugar Coated Murder Podcast. Thank you for listening to Believe. You can show support to your host by subscribing to the show and giving us a five-star rating on your preferred platform. Check us out at Believe.com and search for B-L-E-A-V on YouTube. Hey, New York. You're the most in-depth New York Giants coverage anywhere with Believe in Giants, part of the Believe Network. You'll hear from yours truly, Bob Papa, my co-host Carl Banks, as we break down the New York Giants before and after every game throughout the 2022 season. Your team, your podcast, search B-L-E-A-V, Believe in Giants, wherever you get your podcast.